RFB Legal. The Litigation Series. EncroChat was an encrypted communication service which at its height had over 60,000 users. It was sold as a, as a secure service, uh, anonymity was guaranteed and it followed concerns over privacy and human rights breaches over privacy for individuals who wanted to keep their communications entirely private. Uh, EncroChat provided the EncroPhone, which was a specially modified handset, uh, which had built-in functions for sending private messages, uh, private pi uh, picture messages, end-to-end -end encrypted, and it, again, it guaranteed uh, secure uh, service uh, as if the parties were in an empty room um, with nobody else listening. Um, another feature of the service was the burn function. So when a 15 digit pin was entered into the phone, it would erase the contents entirely. For all intents and purposes, the handset, although modified, looked like a regular handset. It even had a function which presented uh, an initial screen, um, which contained none of the EncroChat features. So presented just as any regular mobile phone would and um, the modifications included uh, Wi-Fi being disabled, the camera function being disabled, again to, to ensure uh, uh, further privacy, uh, the microphone even could be disabled uh, to avoid any kind of interference. Uh, this service was attractive to people who wanted to keep their communications away from any kind of exposure or scrutiny from anyone else. Those included politicians who use the service, celebrities, and of course, um, abused somewhat by those uh, in criminal enterprise. In June 2020, the EncroChat service uh, was breached. And users received a message to their handsets saying that the service had been compromised. They could no longer guarantee that the service was secure and anonymous. And in fact, that the service was now to be defunct. What had transpired was that this was the result of a Europe wide uh, operation of enforcement agencies involving French and Dutch uh, and UK in, uh, enforcement agencies, one of which being the NCA, the National Crime Agency, who went on to launch Operation Ventic. Um, what had been happening was that these enforcement agencies had been listening in, uh, surveilling the communications that were taking place between users and using it to gather evidence. It was reported that servers in France had been infiltrated where the servers for EncroChat were based. It was a sophisticated hack and it took a collaboration between all those European wide enforcement agencies to infiltrate the system and allow them to monitor these communications that were taking place. It was described as in the UK is the broadest and deepest operation into organized crime there has yet been. And it led to over 700 arrests for related suspected offenses. In terms of the legal aspects about EncroChat, uh, the essence is the content of the communications. The phone and the use of the phone isn't unlawful. Uh, possession of the handset in itself isn't unlawful. It, it, it was a legal service. Um, however, what the National Crime Agency will be looking for is any kind of criminal or regulatory breaches. They will be aiming at uh, uh, high profile suspected 
criminals. And of course, some of that including drug dealing, but also there'll be a focus on detecting any financial crime, business related financial crime, evidence of communications to support existing investigations, any evidence to use as the basis to launch an investigation. And they will invest now a lot of resources in scrutinizing the material which they already have to assess whether there's any evidence of criminal impropriety, uh, uh, particularly in terms of uh, uh, financial transactions. On the back of that, we will see the powers used under the Proceeds of Crime Act 2002 and the Criminal Finances Act 2017 to take measures such as restraint and seizure, an account uh, freezing and forfeiture orders uh, to uh, use in their uh, uh, armory of investigative tools even before uh, any prosecution. In terms of legal challenges in these type of cases, uh, I fully expect there to be a lot of focus uh, on uh, a legal seizure of the content, a legal seizure of the material, There'll be great scrutiny into evidential continuity in relation to the digital evidence. There will be arguments related to unfairly obtained evidence. Of course, much of the investigative techniques and the methods used uh, will uh, be very much a mystery at this stage, not to be revealed. Um, However, it won't stop defence practitioners uh, from scrutinising the evidence and considering any appropriate challenges. And they might be as well to exclude evidence because it's unfairly or improperly gathered. We can also uh, expect questions about um, precisely what can and can't be revealed about the investigation techniques, public interest immunity arguments, where enforcement agencies will be keen to protect their techniques and keep their methods from exposure in the courts or otherwise. There'll also be abuse of process arguments. Uh, defense practitioners looking to stay proceedings um, on the basis uh, that it was uh, inappropriately obtained, also potentially human rights arguments in terms of privacy and uh, actions on that basis. Um, in itself, evidence of possession of the handset combined with any other uh, suspected criminal activity may well be very difficult to explain. The handsets cost uh, reportedly in and around 6,000 um, pounds. So uh, possession of handset combined with any other evidence will provide a strong basis, certainly for investigation, if not prosecution. Uh, the N NCA indeed said anyone who's been using the service should be very, very worried. And I anticipate that the net will be cast very wide indeed.